to start with, to set the background. How many of you believe that if a person goes to a grocery stores, he will, if he buys bread, he will buy a jam? I will not. I do. Okay, pretty few. So others won't buy bread. Okay, you will buy something else which you will eat with bread, right? Like butter or something. How many of you will eat? Two weeks. Okay, okay. Then I, then I should say cheese or something, which will end up in a week, right? Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So, but how many of you can think of this thing that if a person at Friday night goes to a grocery store to buy baby diapers, he will also buy beer? Well, again, there's some issues with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And maybe more likely than you think. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's very hard to believe such things. But uh, this is what I'm going to talk about today. That's what is uh, called... Now, if you imagine a scenario of an organization, a company, now they have to take decisions on routine basis. And the decisions are generally driven by so many things that it's not possible for a human brain to process all those things and reach to a, I mean, good decision at least. I won't say it's exact decision, very good decision, because something about future, no one can predict what's going to be in future. But at least according to the previous experiences, previous data, something which is relevant in that context. So I'm going to talk about, that whole thing is called as business intelligence, which I'm going to talk about. So, business intelligence is actually defined as, as per the book of Jiawai Han, as this. Uh, also, okay, I haven't written as business intelligence, but it's all about like finding information, collecting information, analyzing information from, uh, sorry, collecting data, analyzing data to extract good information out of it. Now, business intelligence actually uses data mining techniques. Computer science people call it as data science, data mining. So data mining is defined as this. It refers to extracting or mining knowledge for information from raw data. So we have a lot of data. I mean, internet is full of data nowadays. Every organization has a lot of data, inbound transactional data, user history data. So what are they going to do with that data? They should they, what they do is they extract information out of this data so that they can understand their customers better to help them getting their services faster. So data mining actually helps in that. There are so many techniques in data mining like classification techniques. You might have known like KNN, K, neighbor, K nearest neighbors, or clustering, discriminant analysis. Regression is also a type of data mining technique. There, are, there is one more technique called as, which is called as association rule mining. So that is what I am going to talk about today. What is association rule mining? As the name suggests, it's like association between two attributes. Those attributes can be items. Those attributes can be something else like one might be an age, another might be the choices for that particular age, age person. And examples can be like this bread and butter or bread and jam thing then it can be like, uh, which I talk like beer and diaper thing. So what does data mining, how data mining helps? It, uh, some of the things are very obvious to everyone, but some of the things are not really obvious. So this data and using the data to extract that knowledge is where data mining comes into picture. And in that one of the technique is association rule mining. Association rule mining searches for interesting relationships among items in data set. Now, I will, I will show you a typical data set, how it looks. So, this is like a data set. Though it doesn't appear like this in a database, the format is totally different, but it's very easy to understand. Like, this is the transaction number one. You can imagine a person, first person, who is buying item I1, I2, I3. I1 can be apples, I2 can be oranges, or I3 can be something else. Similarly, person 2 is buying some item I1 and I4. Like that, there are 10 people who are buying 
uh, who have done 10 different transactions with some grocery stores, for example. So this is the data for a grocery store. Now, in this data, what we are trying to find is the relationship between these items. If someone has bought item I1, what is the probability that he will buy item I2? So, it can be 100%. How can it be 100%? If you see that wherever I1 is appearing, I2 is also appearing. Then you can say by 100% probability using this data that I1, whenever a person buys I1, he also buys I2 and the probability is 100%. That particular property is called as confidence. This whole research of association rule mining started somewhere in 1992s. The first paper which appeared was written by uh, Sri Agrawal and Srikant. There are two authors, Agrawal and Srikant. After that, there is a whole lot of literature on association rule mining. It's a big area now. So, there are two terms which they define. One is called support and another is called confidence. I, I told you what is confidence, let me tell you what is support. Now this is, before, okay, before defining let's see what the structure of the association rule is. It's like I1 gives I2. This is called as antecedent and this is called as consequent. So antecedent is something which, for example, you have gone to grocery store and you have picked three items. Now those three items are taken as antecedents. Now the grocery store can see, okay, these three items you have chosen, what will be the next item would you like to choose? So that is what is called as consequent. So using this antecedent, our intention is to predict the consequent. Like, best example will be if you go to Amazon.com, they give a lot of recommendations. How they give recommendations? You have already done some purchases with Amazon. So Amazon knows what are your choices. So depending on that, they try to come up with some other kind of items which you, you would like to have or purchase. So these are called as recommendations. Those recommendations can be taken as, can be assumed to be as uh, consequence. And your previous customer history can be uh, assumed to be as uh, antecedent. Now, Support is, these are some numbers I will explain later. Support is what is probability of antecedent and consequent both. For example, if there is a rule I1 gives I2, support is how many times, what is the probability of buying both I1 and I2 together. If you see this data set, How many transactions of there were I1 and I2 appear together? It's like transaction number 1, then transaction number 7, and transaction number 10. I don't know if there is any, yeah. So 3. 3 out of 10 transactions are there where I1 and I2 are bought, bought together. So the support is 3 divided by 10, which is 0.3. That is the probability of, probability of buying both I1 and I, I, I2 together. Now, let's come to the confidence. So, the confidence is defined as probability of I1 and I2 together divided by probability of I1. So, it's like you take both the item, all the items in antecedents and consequence, find out the probability of buying or having that together, divide that probability by buying only the items in the antecedents. That is what is probably that is what is called as confidence. So here the confidence will be, we already saw that probability of I1 and I2 is 0.3. So the numbers So is it the probability of buying I1 and I2 together or is together. it the probability of buying I1 or I2? No, together. It's written as union. The reason is 